Hey folks, welcome back. We're going to be doing a knife sharpening video today. Just a couple of basic tips that I've picked up. I've been doing quite a few woodworking projects in the past uh, few weeks. So one of the knives that I'm going to show you today is my little flex cut roughing knife. Nothing fancy. You get those for about 30-40 bucks at uh, Lee Valley if you live in Canada. I'm sure any work, woodworking store wherever you live should have something like that made in the USA. So uh, that's one of the ones I'm going to run through and then while we're here I thought okay we'll go through some kitchen knives. So got a couple of those here and we'll talk about those in a minute. Uh, with this knife, I mean it's it's in fairly good condition right now. Shouldn't be too bad. So you can see there. Uh, I do try to stay on top of it because I, again like when you're carving roughly every 10-15 minutes or so you're going to have to put an edge back on that. Uh, so as long as you've got a good strop and some honing compound, then you should be okay. Just give you an idea. Uh, I made these myself when I first got the knife. And I started out uh, just basically a piece of pine on the back. And this was my first effort. This was just part of my leather that I use to cover my lap when I carve. I just cut a piece of this stuff off and you can see very rough suede on the back of it. I thought, oh, that'll do. This is chair leather. It's a bit too soft for doing a strop. It did the trick for three, four weeks, but I very quickly discovered I wasn't getting the razor sharp cuts that I wanted to, that you're supposed to. When you cut with this, you're supposed to see a smooth surface after you cut. It's supposed to be straight through. You shouldn't see any chipping or any flaking like that. So there was uh, a little too much flaking for my liking, so I thought, okay, let's get rid of this. And lucky enough, I just came across a very big piece of vegetable tan leather from my very generous stepbrother who happened to have a pile of the stuff. And this is much better. So this is what you want to be using. And again, took a piece of pine wood, uh, basically cut a piece close enough to that put it on the back of there with some uh, contact cement glue, uh, crazy glue, whatever you got, whatever is going to make it stick on. I put that on the back, I stuck it in the vise for about five minutes and it's on there. So again, like once it's on there, you just trim around the sides and then you've got it cut to size. Now the green stuff is honing compound that I bought when I got the knife. And all you do with green stuff is you just rub it on there and it's sort of like a crayon. I just keep it in the bag so I don't get it all over my hands. But you rub it on there, get a little bit of the green stuff on. It smells like crayon too. And then once it's in there, and you just put your strop down like that, you get your knife. I'm left-handed, that's the way I'm going. You're right-handed, put it over there. You get your knife, and very gently, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten! Ah, ah, ah! Same thing the other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then what I do, I just switch back the other way. I go nine that way, nine that way, eight, eight, seven, seven, six, six, five, five, four, three, two, one. You get the idea. Like I said, I've already done this, so I don't really need to run that over too much. But you just give it a couple of those, give it a little bit of a shine, and off you go. And again, just to give you an idea of how sharp it is, there's some of the tan leather. There's just a little piece, and there's your tan leather. So that's pretty sharp. The trick that I usually like to do as well, if you've got a knife, obviously be careful, but you can place it on your thumbnail, and if you feel that little bit of resistance, and I'm sure you can hear the squeak, and that's how you know you got a sharp knife. Well, that and you've left little pieces of your nail on the back of the knife. So that gives you an idea. Anyway, uh, like I said, didn't want to spend too long on that. That's the idea behind that, and now we'll move on to the kitchen knives. So we'll get that out of the way, and then 
I'll show you two of my knives. This is just a little job I got from IKEA probably about 20 years ago. Uh, I don't use it much anymore because I went all snobby once upon a time and went out and blew 200 bucks on a fancy Japanese carbon steel job, uh, which I do love, don't get me wrong, I, I still love this knife, I mean this thing is awesome. Again, like, here's your tan leather and, oops, there it goes, you yeah. uh, know. But again, I mean, like, I'm not so much doing it with that. This is a good knife, you know, the wife likes it. I just like my carbon steel better. Uh, but again, I, this sucker obviously fairly sharp. Just like that, nothing wrong with that. We don't need to sharpen that, I've already done it. So we're gonna go through with this guy, and again, go through the steps. So, first of all, you wanna get a cloth. I happen to have an old bar towel. That's just all the uh, the sharpening stone that's on there. That's not dirt or anything like that. That's coming straight off the stone. I don't bother washing it because that's the only thing I use it for is putting this stone down. If you don't have an old bar towel, you know, face cloth will do. Just like that. And then what I've got in this box here is some whetstones. So most people will say, yeah, you got 1,000 grit right there. That'll do the majority of the work. And then I've got a combination 1,000, 6,000 stone. And again, uh, this I bought with my Japanese knife once upon a time in a store in Calgary. Knifeware, uh, I believe. If you ever go there, I think the guy's name was Kevin Kent. Good guy. He'll look after you. Uh, this one came from Lee Valley. It was a combination stone, like I said. It's 1,000 on the other, on one side, 6,000 on the other. So the higher you go up in the grains, obviously, is more of a polishing, more of a refining. Your 1,000 just generally starts you off, and then, I mean, like, you can get all the grains in between. You can go 1,000, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12,000, something like that. And also, what I found a little while ago, as I was out walking around in the yard was an old piece of stone, some kind of masonry. I don't know if it's concrete cement or something like that. But I picked this up just out of curiosity because I usually pick up crap that I don't really need. And I brought it home and I dropped it into there with the other whetstones. And I thought, you know, just for giggles, let's give it a try one day. I have never put this knife on that stone, so don't even panic about that. But I do take my, you know, $20 Ikea knife every once in a while, and I will rub it over this piece of stone. And basically all this is, is a rougher version of those stones. This is probably like a, I don't know, 100 grit or something like that. It's pretty rough. But all it does for me is get the knife started. And immediately you can feel... There's a bit more bite on the edge. And again, I don't have to do it that much. It's just to get started with. And then I can move on to the other stones. So again, you take the 1000 out of the water. With the wet stones as well, you always want to make sure you're soaking them for at least 15 minutes. Uh, because you want the water to penetrate all the way through. So you put it in the water and you see it bubble up. Leave it for about 15 minutes at least. I leave mine in all the time. I never even take them out. They've been sitting in this water. You can see by the side of it. They've been sitting in this water for a couple of years, I think. And that's about it. I, it's not going anywhere. It's a stone. So you put it down on your mat. And you get your knife. And you put it at about a 20 degree angle, which is roughly the shape of the point. On a knife, if I can draw better, that's basically what you've got. And then the rest of the knife comes up more like that. So you want to make sure you angle it just right. So you get that point. 
tilt it just like that, about 20 degrees, like I said, and then you should be able to get the, the right bevel on it. If you're going too high or too low, you're going to flatten that out, you're going to round the edge, and then it's, not, it's still going to be dull. So you have to make sure you get it just right. Most knives, I think 99% of knives are probably a 20 degree angle. So it's roughly probably two quarters underneath your knife. So you get it, start right at the top, make sure the edge is there, and then you're just going to run it like that. And same again. You're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, each way. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Make sure you got lots of water on your stone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now some people will do this way, some people will do a back and forth like this, which will work. It's just, for me, that technique, I haven't been able to master it. It seems to work a lot better when, for me when I'm just dragging it across like this, because then you're only taking the blade one way. You're not dragging it that way and then pushing it that way. And for me, it seems like I can't get that, to that technique just the right way. So I end up basically just rubbing back on what I've just beveled out, if you know what I mean, if that makes sense. So this is just focusing the blade one way. If you want to do it that way, I'm sure there are other videos somebody will be able to teach you. It's just not going to be me. But again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And again, you just keep going. Even if you get down to one with this, with that count, the 10 down to one, and you still find it's not sharp, you go again. And then after you've gone again, if it's still not sharp, you go again. But basically, how you know you're done Again, I mean, you can do the paper test, you can try the little trick on the back of the nail. You know, I, I've even heard of uh, people, you know, trimming the back of their hair or shaving the hair off your arm. But as well, you want to take a look at the blade and you'll see right at the edge, you see that little silver lining. And that's what you're looking for as well. You want to be able to see a clear line along the edge of the knife. I don't think I'm really picking it up that well here. But you want to be able to see that clear line at the edge of the knife saying, yeah, there's a sharp edge on that. So you can go, as I said, keep going with that. And then once you get through that, I'm not going to have you sit here for, you know, a good 20, 30 minutes watching me sharpen a knife. But once you go through on there, then obviously some people have a steel and this is for taking the burrs out. So basically again, you're using that 20 degree angle and you're slowly coming across and running the length of the blade, both sides. Go slow, don't hurt yourself, take your time, no rush. It's not one of those Gordon Ramsay jobs where he starts doing this and trying to look all fancy. Even Gordon Ramsay screws that up as far as I'm concerned. Do that. And then if you are so inclined after that as well, I even made a straw for the kitchen knives. I didn't put the green stuff on this one because to be honest, when I looked at the box for this green stuff, it had a warning for California residents that this stuff will cause cancer. So be aware of that when you buy that. Uh, I don't want any of that stuff going into my food. So that's why I didn't put it on my kitchen knife one. It's only for the carving, but again, uh, same kind of thing. You know, you're going to get your 20 degree angle and you're going to run it across like that. And run the blade up and then run the blade back that way. And you can hear that nice sound. That means something is happening. And it's better than what it was, like I said. But again, I'm not going to have you sit here for 20 minutes, half an hour, watching me sharpen a knife. 
So let's just try that and see how we do. Not bad. So there's your quick little lesson on how to sharpen a knife. If you enjoyed that, let me know. Leave a comment, leave a like. Subscribe if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. See you next time.